Okay, so was was he a fan of movies? Do you know? Oh, was my he, God, yes. What was I, he into? And Well, that was I was going to film school when I first met him, and so we immediately bonded because I was like 19, 20 years old, and I was obsessed with cinema and going to film school, and he loved films, and so we just would talk about films incessantly and just like go to movies and yeah so and then when i stayed at his apartment in new york he had an entire room filled with videos Oops. <laughs> that's all right i'm still going to be able to hear you yeah. sorry yeah no that's fine um yeah, so he had, a, he had a, a room filled, he had like bought a video store, and so Jean-Michel oh. was obsessed with movies, no, and I think that if he ever, if he lived, I think that's what he wanted to do, is he wanted to become a director. Wow. Yeah, that's what's kind of amazing about um, Julian's film, is that it kind of, it felt like something he might have made. Yeah. You know? That yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah, I think that he was, you know, definitely very visual. And I think also he had a very specific point of view, and I think he was getting frustrated that when he would do a painting, they would just get bought and go into some collector's home or some collector's storage room, and um, nobody would see it, really. And so I think that what he loved about music and also cinema is people would be able to see it. Yeah, right. And um, will you tell me, uh, you said you had shot... Maybe you can just tell me on camera, like you shot footage 25 years ago and why you decided to wait yeah, um, to do something with it Yeah, now. when I met him, um, yeah, that was one of the first things I said. I was going to film school and he said, oh, why don't you make a movie about me? And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I started filming him and I would just film him painting and then, it, then maybe like a couple years later, um, I, you know, I'd film at openings and then I filmed an interview, like a real formal interview with him. And then uh, I saw him probably like about a couple weeks before he died. He stopped through Los Angeles and he kind of told me lots of things, but one of the things he told me was about how upset he was about how a lot of his friends had taken things that he had given them and sold them or they didn't really, you know, care that he had given them to He him. felt like they didn't value the they artwork didn't value, I don't know, or I the friendship. It was like or, a gift or a friendship, yeah. something that you give to somebody as a gift. Like if I give you a birthday card, if you then sell your birthday card, I gave you Sell it so, on eBay. I'm going to sell this video on eBay. Just yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so... So I think that that really hurt him in a deep way, and so that's why I felt that even um, that even though he died, so I took after he died, I took all my film and I put it away in a drawer, and I just felt like even dead, I didn't want him to think I would be taking advantage of him or profiting off of his celebrity or something in some way. And so um, it wasn't until the museum started to do this big retrospective. There was one at the Whitney, and then it traveled to, um, not at the, at the Brooklyn Museum, and then it traveled, there wasn't one at the Whitney, but then also Brooklyn, and then it traveled to MoCA, and went around the United States, um, that I found out that there's no footage that exists of him, like wow. very, very little. And so um, um, that's when I thought this is important. I think that it's time that people hear what he had to say. And also a lot of people have been talking about him, whether it was the Schnabel movie or there's a book. And I just felt like that th th they still weren't getting the Jean-Michel across that I knew and that also I had on film. I thought right. that it was important to hear his voice. Oh, that's fantastic.